Hello everybody, as you know, I am Robert Centeno, one of the co-founders to TGT, the guys tech. And this is going to be a video toward system builders. So anybody that is interested in either learning to build computers or even if you've been putting computers together for years and years and you do have experience, a lot of times, just like some of us here, um, you know, as technology changes and uh, companies start going from using quality parts to cheaper parts, you know, things tend to change with the quality of certain forms of technology. So this time around, in just a minute, we're going to be joined by Nathaniel Ortiz, and we're going to be talking about power supplies, ratings, and wattage, and some things that you need to look out for when you go to pick out a power supply. Hey, if this is something you're just getting into for the first time, uh, it's upside down right now, but this is the power supply. This one says it's 650 watts. So if we turn this around, <clears throat> this is the simplest way to explain what a power supply is. Basically, when you plug your computer or your desktop into the wall, into a wall outlet, that plug is connecting into the power supply. All right, and the power supply is what obviously delivers power to all the components in every single computer, okay? Now, one thing you need to understand about power supplies is that even if a power supply says it's 800 watts, for example, okay? Uh, I've met a lot of experienced system builders and computer technicians over the past few years that they tell me that they don't want to buy uh, a 700 watt power supply because then they're going to be wasting, they don't need 700 watts and they're going to be wasting uh, all that extra wattage and electricity when they have it plugged into, uh, you know, when they have it, the machine working. And that is actually not how it works. So the power supply will only use what it needs to use to keep your components running. Okay, so if you're only using 300 watts or, or, or you know, a very low amount and you turn your machine on, the power supply is not going to be actually using all 800 or 1200 watts if your machine is only using 300 or, or 350, okay? So that's another important thing to understand. So now we're gonna go to Nathaniel Ortiz who was going to explain a little bit more about what you need to watch out for when you go to purchase power supplies for your system when you're building them. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'm actually gonna pop the fan off the casing open for this, probably because I'm probably never gonna use this power supply. If I can figure out where the, all right, here we go. So I'm gonna show you why I think this guy is never gonna reach 680 watts. By the way, don't guys, don't do this. Okay, especially if it's ever been plugged in because power supplies can save charge and it can hurt or even kill you. So if you have a power supply and you're deciding to take it apart, first of all, be aware it voids the warranty, which I don't really care about. Second of all, it is dangerous. You, you can short something. If you put it back together wrong, it can cause a lot of problems. Save. Possible fire? Yes. And you're removing the fan. Yeah, it's, it, it's attached to the casing. Oh, it's the, the warranty sticker. Where's my... Where's my knife? Where's my knife? Oh, there it is. Call that a knife? This is a knife. <laughs> yeah. As I said, no safety and uh, health regulations here, guys. <laughs> Don't do this. All right. This is why I think it's never going to reach 680 watts. Why, though? The puny little heat sinks. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, okay. It has really shitty heat sinks. Yeah. I mean, it has nice capacitors, but... It it's just very lackluster. Like there's no way this thing is actually gonna reach that voltage, uh, that wattage, without something failing. So even at eighty percent, you you don't think it would do the? 80%. As I said, four hundred, four hundred fifty is probably gonna be the peak. Wow. 
on this before you start getting into territory which you do not want to get to. What's the point of them putting 680 on the box though? Like why? Because people why? will buy it. <laughs> now, nobody out there get triggered, but people are stupid. Mm. All right, when they buy things and they see a bigger number on it, they think it's better, or because it's heavier, it's better. But does that 680 actually mean anything? I mean, is there? At any point, can this power supply? Oh yeah, it'll definitely do 680 at some point before it catches fire. Oh, I see, I see. So in other words, if you have serious hardware hooked up to this thing, don't get a twenty dollar power supply. Don't. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. Okay, okay. Um, remember, guys, the power supply is connected to everything. Your power supply blows, and it's a good quality one. Might not take everything with it. It's a shitty one like these. It's gonna take some stuff with it, if not catch fire. Um, I remember a story of one of my coworkers. Remember Jose? Yes. He had a. Oh, didn't he have the in the inland one? Yeah. <laughs> um, he said that because he had uh, some high power consumption stuff on there. I think he had two seventy eight seventies on it, or something like that, or equivalent of. And the power draw reached the point where the power supply suddenly started blowing its caps. Holy shit. He said it sounded like gunshots in his room. <laughs> so, I mean, okay, so these shitty little brands are okay for like your home desktop, like a Dell or an HP oh, or You're just going to open up Microsoft Word or Notepad, right? <laughs> yeah, if it's an office computer, go ahead, because that watch really won't mean anything. And for people who think that, oh, because it's 680 watts, it's going to use 680 watts, it doesn't. Right. It only uses the power. It, draws right, right plus the uh loss right and that, that's another good point too because i've had customers tell me that uh they're not gonna buy a 700 watt power supply because then they're wasting 700 watts and i try to explain to them that the power supply is not actually using 700 watts it's only using what it needs to in order to operate the hardware on the machine but then you know we get these people that are like listen here sonny I've been uh, doing this for 50 years, even though I'm only 30, and I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, those people, I love those people. <laughs> yeah. No, the best is when you get the network engineer who's been doing it for 25 years. Oh man. Hey, um, does this switch do uh, VPN? Does this router do VPN? <laughs> <laughs> but you're you're the network guru of 25 years. Why are you asking me, the lowly sales associate? Yeah, or what, what's wrong with my computer? Well, the motherboard is bad. No, it's not. Then why'd you ask? <laughs> <laughs> if you know, <laughs> how do you know? Yeah. <laughs> so explain explain why the the wattage rating on the box would not be accurate. Okay, so for those not too familiar with power supplies or for a refresher, there's ratings. Um, the efficiency rating. It starts off with no rating and goes all the way up to titanium. And each has the um, different levels of efficiency. Bronze is 80%. The box on the side says 80% at typical load. I really highly doubt that. Um, so the ratings mean how high the power can actually go? Well, burn? the efficiency. So. Oh, okay, okay how much power you can go to before you start dropping in efficiency and gaining in heat. The more efficient it is, the less power gets leaked out as heat. Um, so if you have a titanium grade power supply, which honestly nobody really needs, but if you got the money to go for it, right? Those things have like 93% efficiency and they have a certain threshold at the wattage which they do it. This power supply, it says 80% at typical draw realistically i wouldn't try and draw more than 400 450 watts because at that point you're going to start getting to the point of a lot more heat coming out of this thing and chances of it failing and never cheap out on power supplies okay i actually don't even know why i bought this so what's the rating on this one it says 80 percent, but it's not actually rated oh, okay and then what would be uh, uh, like you would have a decal somewhere that says bronze rated or 80 plus bronze 80 plus Silver for the older, but they don't have silver anymore. They took it out, but some power supplies still have that marking. Uh, it's silver, gold, platinum, titanium. And okay, titanium obviously being the highest rated. And those are usually reserved for the 1200 watt plus power supplies. Wow. 
the okay. really high-end monstrosities, which again, most people won't need unless you're running a serious rendering rig or a mining machine, if anybody's still doing that. So just to make sure that we understand exactly what we were talking about here, um, even if a power supply, like especially if you cheap out and you get a really inexpensive, cheap power supply, even if, it, uh, if the rating is low, even if it says it does 500 watts or 600 watts, that actually doesn't mean that it can actually reach that, that full amount of power. And you've got to be really careful because if you do, if you do have some heavy hardware hooked up to a low rated cheap power supply and you actually push the power supply too close to that limit, you're actually endangering the components on your machine because then at that point it's not guaranteed Unfortunately, it's it's all marketing, right? And it's not guaranteed that it's actually going to be safe for the components in your machine to be pushing uh, a less expensive power supply to, toward its limits. And you, you'll have issues where the power supply will die. And as Nate was stating, if it, if it does go out, there's no way of telling how it's gonna go down. So the power supply could just die if you're lucky. Um, and, and, but in many, many cases, what may happen is, is that if, if there is a short or something goes wrong, it will fry your board or multiple components, okay? So, and, and even if you do have, if you buy individual parts and you do have warranty, you know, replacement service or whatever it is, and you just send it back and they send you a new one, Regardless, you should still be very, very careful because then that means that you're going to be without a machine until you get the new part replacements and you get everything back together. And as you know, there are times where, you know, we get new parts in the mail uh, and we go to hook them up and they're dead on arrival, right? I mean, that's happened to me. I, I've been uh, working in this thing for quite a few years and I can't tell you how many customers had gotten pissed off with me because <laughs> I order a new part and I get the new part and then I, I go to install it and the part is dead, right? So uh, this just again some tips to, to think about, some things to think about when you go to purchase a power supply to either build yourself something or to give something for a customer, especially if it's for a customer. Um, it, it could be challenging because a lot of people, they, they want to spend as little money as possible and they don't really understand and they go on eBay or, or Amazon and they say, hey, why is your power supply $70 and I see this power supply on Amazon for $20, you know? And a lot of people don't really understand the differences, why certain power supplies are a lot more expensive, what the ratings mean what the wattage means, okay? So just keep that in mind the next time you go to make a purchase uh, like this for whatever your reason may be, okay? Thanks for watching. Uh, if you know anybody interested in this sort of thing or you enjoy the video, please share. We appreciate the support and we'll be back soon with more tips.